Hello everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott and let's just continue talking about the PlayStation 5. If you're over in America, congratulations, it's your launch day. You've either already got a system or one is on the way to you. And if you're in the UK or the rest of the world, your systems will be arriving in the next few weeks. And I just wanted to share all the various tips, tricks, small tidbits of stuff that I've found across the last few weeks, getting hands on with the system across the review period. Obviously going forward, having millions and millions of people finally getting their hands on the system means that all sorts of other secrets and different things that none of us knew we could do will emerge over time. So shout out some of your own things down in the comments below. For now, I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and this is nine things you didn't know your PS5 could do. Number nine, replay any cutscene. If you're anything like me and you just miss, you know, something that happens in a cutscene, or maybe you just want to watch a particular action sequence or plot reveal or whatever more than once, um, the PS5 does have a solution. Now, it's not something that's built into the system in regards to a label saying rewatch cutscene, but you can make this work. First of all, make sure that your captures are set to easy screenshots. This means that like on the PlayStation 4, you're capturing a previous amount of time. On the PS5, setting this to easy screenshots means that double tapping the create button, the new share button, will capture the last few minutes of footage, i.e. the cutscene that you want to watch again. From here, just hit the PlayStation button and go to the end of all the cards and you'll see your most recent capture sitting there. Brilliantly, inside the PlayStation 5's card system, you can watch trailers or pieces of footage, videos in general, without leaving the game itself. Obviously, applied to this new capture that you've just taken, you can rewatch the cutscene that you just took. That's kind of phrased weirdly, but point being, you can rewatch any clip that you just took inside the card, inside the game, without having to leave and go across the UI to any other part of the dashboard itself. Number eight, turn the PlayStation 5 on using Spotify or the PlayStation app. This I just love, especially because the new Bring Me The Horizon EP is absolutely brilliant, and I like my PlayStation 5 booting up playing Bring Me The Horizon when I want to dive onto it. To do this yourself, you need to head into the power save settings and then dive into the rest mode settings. Once you've set it so that one of the options inside rest mode is to turn the console on using Spotify, go into the Spotify app and look for other sources while a song is playing and you'll see your system listed. A similar version of this was in the PlayStation 4, although as far as I know, you could never turn the system on from, from a cold boot with a song. However, you can do that now. Once this setting has been turned on and providing your console is then turned off when you want to test the result out, go into the Spotify app, make sure something is playing and then look at your available sources. The system will populate as an option and once you tap on it, that will make the PlayStation 5 kick on and it will boot up playing your song of choice as the audio gets carried over. One small thing to make sure you do on the PS5 side if you want to is disable the extra login check where you have to make sure you're, you've grabbed a controller and press the button to get past, you know, buttoning through the boot up animation. If you literally just want your system to come on playing the song that you've chosen, get rid of the login option and the console will just come on straight to the dashboard playing your music of choice. In my case, that's bring me the horizon and just give me that all day long. Number seven, vacuum the system safely. Again, I don't know about you, but I remember the horror of my parents, my mom doing a bit of vacuuming next to the console, next to an old PlayStation, and just all the myths that used to go around the playground that if the vacuum got near the system, it would just completely wipe it. I had a friend who told me that a vacuum was rolled over a disc once and he could never use that disc again. And I don't even know if that's true to this day. You can let me know down in the comments. I have no idea whether that's the case or not, but I would assume that because of the new um, implementation of vacuum holes, dedicated vacuum holes in the PlayStation 5 that it is a problem that needed solving and has needed solving for the last few years. So with that stuff in mind, all you need to do is remove the fascia plate, something that I'm going to get to as a separate point, and you can reveal specific vacuum holes in the PlayStation 5 that you can just stick a nozzle up next to and vacuum the innards of the console without worrying that it's going to corrupt data or otherwise affect the system itself. Dedicated vacuum holes, what a time to be alive. Number six, various system level options. I need to scream about this as much as possible because Sony have taken a leaf out of the Xbox 360 book and let you do system level settings for inverting aim. It's a it's an olive branch to all the inverters like myself that always have to pause the game when you hand us a controller, go into the options and change the invert. I want my up to be down and my downs to be ups. And thankfully now you can do that on a system level. To find these options, go into settings, look down at save data and app settings, then go into game presets. I did cover this in a separate video because honestly, when I came across these settings during the review period, I kind of just freaked out, um, obviously because of the inversion thing, but I also think being able to set stuff like difficulty or performance versus fidelity, options like that, you know, system level subtitle settings, things like that, they're all super helpful for as wide a pool of gamers as possible, and that only elevates the medium overall. For now though, just know that if you're a 
dirty inverter like myself, you can tell the console to be that too, and it'll make sure that every time you dive into a game, your inverted aiming settings are exactly as you left them. Number five, the DualSense controller works on Android. This one comes from Austin Evans, who in his initial unboxing video just found out that by testing the DualSense with as many different things as possible, in his case, he was going from a Mac to an Xbox, which it didn't recognize, um, even the PlayStation 4, which it did have some success with the microphone working, um, eventually landed on the fact that Android phones do recognize the controller and will let you control them as if it is any other wireless controller. Obviously, in his video, this led to him finding out that you could control Xbox Game Pass, the streaming version, the xCloud version, using a PlayStation 5 controller, but it's worth noting that you can use the DualSense as a wireless Android controller, regardless of whatever games you want to play on your system. As a side note, because the Nintendo Switch controller is also recognized as a separate Bluetooth controller, you could absolutely look to a, a platform agnostic future where one person, maybe let's say two people are playing on an Android, one person plays with a PlayStation 5 controller, the other person plays with a Nintendo Nintendo Switch controller and someone else for some reason has an Xbox controller all enjoying something together the way the world could potentially be. Number four, easily remove the fascia plates. I'm always terrified about this stuff. I never liked the idea of getting hands-on with the system in a hardware sense and removing something, whether it's replacing a hard drive, unscrewing something. I just don't like it. I think it's the console side of me that's just terrified that I'm gonna get something wrong. Some sort of thermal paste thing is gonna go wrong and I'm just gonna break everything forever. Um, in the PlayStation 5's case though, as was covered in Sony's teardown video, they are all up for you removing the fascia plates themselves. All you need to do is get both hands on one of the plates and click it down, click it away from, Let's say if the system was standing vertically, you're clicking it southwards. You're clicking it away from the logo at the top. Um, you can do this on both sides. Both fascia plates click out and back in pretty damn easily. And it feels like they're encouraging customization on top of the fact that the console itself does also have tiny little PlayStation symbols if you look close enough. Yes, it still sucks that Sony have blocked um, Plate Station, who were a separate website looking into doing customization of PS5 plates, but if you just want to disconnect parts of your system and go spray paint them, whatever the hell comes to mind, you absolutely can. Personally, I kind of want to try and recreate the Spider-Verse spray paint logo um, from Enter the Spider-Verse, but I'm also pretty terrified of messing everything up again. Number three, you can speed up unoptimized PlayStation 4 games. The whole conversation around, you know, optimization, the idea of taking an old game, will it run on the PlayStation 5? Are we waiting for a specific next gen patch or will it still work? Whatever. Um, it is a bit of a mess right now, and I think it'll just be something that unfolds across the next few months as you know millions of people get hands-on with the hardware. Um, however, if you play any PlayStation 4 version of a game, the vast majority do seem to see an uptick, at least in terms of load times. Um, as an example, something like God of War uh, or Ghost of Tsushima, if you go into those games' menus, let's take God of War for example, um, go in the settings and set that to favor visuals. I forget the exact phrasing, it's the one that isn't performance. Um, that means that the game has an unlocked frame rate whilst it tries to prioritize prioritize visuals, um, which obviously led to a lot of hiccups on the PlayStation 4 Pro and things like that. However, on PS5, that just runs at a butter smooth 60 frames a second while still giving you the most high quality, high fidelity image possible. As another example, I've been playing a lot of Ghost Runner, both on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. And although Ghost Runner does have a next gen patch in the works, like an official proper next gen patch that's coming at some point in the future, if you just play that base PS4 version on the PS5, it loads a lot faster. For now, it's kind of just going to be on us to try as many different different titles as possible, and then note on a case-by-case -case basis exactly what the differences are between the PS4 and the PS5. What I found, to be honest, is that everything is just better on PlayStation 5, providing the system can recognize the file. Cough, cough, looking at you, PT. Number two, load into a game's checkpoint from the game hub. I love this thing, I love this feature, I love the whole PlayStation 5 UI card-based system where you can just hit the PlayStation Home button, um, especially if you're inside a game, and just bring up a list of challenges or different goals that you haven't got to yet, hit square and jump straight to them in a matter of seconds. Um, this applies on the dashboard level too. Let's say that you don't have any games booted up, you don't have anything that you're about to resume. You're just sitting on the dashboard and you're, you know, you're browsing various titles and you go down from the XMB onto a game's hub, that will still list various challenges and things that you're yet to get to, which you can push square on and jump from this menu straight into that specific part of the game that you're yet to complete. As test cases, I can only really offer up Astro's Playroom and Spider-Man Miles Morales, but I hope that this is indicative of where first party titles are going in regards to taking full advantage of the PlayStation 5's hardware. Just hit the square button when you're hovering over one of these challenge cards and you'll beam into the game for going any sense of fast traveling to a point and then getting to a mission giver specifically. It'll just place you down in front of the person and you can just carry on with the mission the exact 
exact thing that you want to do. And number one, view all the time you've spent playing games. This is straight out of the Nintendo Switch, to be honest. It's something that, you know, Sony are a very reactionary company. They, you know, did trophies because achievements kicked off. They did VR because Oculus Rift kicked off. They tend to just sort of see what the competition is doing and then go, yep, yeah, well, that's good. We'll do some of that. Over on the Nintendo Switch, if you go on your profile, you, it'll list every game that you've played so far alongside a playtime. And um, this is also the case on the PS5, although to get onto the menu, you need to hit the PlayStation Home button, go all the way along to your profile, and then you can just see a list of every game that you've played. Brilliantly, this is backdated across the PS4 as well. So like it brings in everything that you've played across the last seven years. Um, me, I found out that I had about 400 hours banked in Rocket League, which to be honest, isn't anywhere near as much as I thought I'd played that game. Still, it's a brilliant system. It gives you a good eye as to which titles you've maybe overlooked, maybe some things you want to get back to, especially because right here you can also access a game specific trophies. Going forward, I would hope that from this screen I could access any games given challenges and just button into them as quickly as I can on something like Miles Morales. There's a whole future of just expedient game playing that I you feel is being teased with the first few titles here, and I hope that it just is the way the system goes in the coming years. And those are various things I didn't feel like you would know your PlayStation 5 could do. Let me know what else you find down in the comments below, as like I've said, I think that we'll find a whole bunch of stuff going forward once everybody gets their hands on the new hardware. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you soon.